Okay, so good uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. It's the 22nd of October. We're into uh, the second day of our University to Jobs short course, and we're here on the uh, day two. It's kind of the first stand-up. We had our challenge introduction yesterday. Um, for those of you, I guess most of you are new to the programs that we have, um, what the stand-ups, uh, what we use the stand-ups for are a chance, is there a sound echo? Is the sound not clear? Kelly Mariam is saying there's a sound issue. Is anyone else facing the same issue? It's good on my side, on my end. Okay. Maybe you can just use reactions. Is the sound okay for people? Ekram says the sound is okay. Anyone? Okay. So I'll continue. I hope I'm going to speak closer to the microphone. So we use these stand-ups as an opportunity to share any announcements, but most importantly, um, just to hear from the uh, trainees who are here on what they're working on and to resolve any issues uh, that people are facing. And so in the world of work, we find that it works very effectively if people spend 30 seconds and just summarize what they're working on, what they've gotten done, and any blockers that they're facing. So we'd like to follow that same approach um, and just here from the trainees who are here, we see there's a handful of people who are here, Berhanu, Christophert, Adenach, Hila Mariam, Liliane, and Prince. Uh, we'd love to hear from you how you're finding the training content, what you're working on, and any challenges uh, that you're facing. So uh, you can use that hand raising function, which is built into Google Meet. Uh, so please just raise your hands and then we'll go in order and we can just keep it to about 30 seconds, a very brief update from every person. Alternatively, you can raise your hands and just ask any questions uh, that you have. So who would like to go first? And just, just as a reminder, this is uh, it's an opportunity to ask questions to share what you're working on. So please, you can raise your hand and then you can just give us a quick update on what you've been working on and ask any questions that you have. Yeah, Adonach. May I come? Yes, yeah, please. May I come in? Please. No, thank you uh, for giving this chance. First of all, uh, I'm very interested to uh, of the person maybe i came from uh, the english language department just since i'm interested to join but i think does it need special maybe uh specific specifically the uh discipline maybe does it need absolutely not as far as i know no, no I, yeah as far, it's open. as far as i have looked, i've looked at yesterday's uh meeting it's okay from the beginning it's okay I'm hesitating now whether it is challenging for me or not because of the background of uh, specialization. Okay, so this is maybe my so, question. Thank you. Yeah, I think so. Thank you for uh, your question. The question that I understood was if somebody doesn't have a background in technology, will the training be too difficult? Is that a fair summary of your question? Yeah, yeah, you can. And uh, not only the technology part, even sometimes the key terms that you are using here yep. may be difficult for someone who come from uh, different specialization. Okay. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, th I think the question is fair. Uh, what we have tried to do is to uh, design the content so that anyone who is interested is able to follow. Now, um, I think some of the terminologies, let's use the example of LLMs, I think maybe we can phrase those as jargon, which is you get used to using a certain expression as a short form, and we should try and avoid those as much as possible. But I believe and I'm convinced that actually the content is such that anyone with any background is able to follow it. Um, one of the most important uh, pieces of support we have is the Slack group, where 
from now, for the next six hours, we have a full-time team of tutors who are waiting. And uh, there's a roster of people. And if, you, if anyone has any questions, if you ask that question, we can guarantee you that within five minutes uh, for the, in this period from noon to 1800 GMT or UTC, you'll get an answer. So if there's any questions you have, uh, then you should ask them there. If there's any, if you want to know what's the right way to do research using something like ChatGPT, or what is the difference between ChatGPT and Gemini or Copilot, or what is a product specification, then I think that's the right place to ask. But for us, what's most important is not necessarily this one scenario that we'll be working on this week. It's the approach of how can I use AI to get a month's work of work, work done in maybe 10 hours. And we want to give people hands-on experience in doing that. So we don't just want to have people learn about something and write a test about something. For us, we want you to finish the week being able to show your, your neighbors, your colleagues, that this is what I was able to put together. And by the end of the week, you will be able to put together a visual with text that you put together using AI, a picture that you put together using AI, um, a budget for your project, a document for your project, a website for your project, and a deck of PowerPoint slides that puts everything together to say that if I have an idea in my mind that within one week I was able to put together a website, an advertisement, a budget, and an approach to a funder um, all for my idea and I was able to do all of that myself. So that, that profile or that proof of what you know is not just a certificate, you'll get a certificate as well, but it's that website, it's that set of slides, it's that Instagram post, and we're gonna be working with any with you over the next week to put all of that together. So the short answer is, um, it is open to anyone who is interested and has about 10 hours over the next week to do it. And if you face any challenges, uh, we are there to help in the form of being able to answer any questions that you have. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm very and, interested to attend. And I think one, I wanna go even further and say, if anyone is interested and you're stuck, then you should go to the Slack group and find one of the tutors who's there and say, I don't know what to do. And we're even ready to walk you through step by step, uh, all the way down to getting on a call with somebody. So this is why we're here. We don't have any other job other than making sure that enough people get through the UTJ program. Are there any other questions? Uh, anyone who wants to share the progress that they were they were able to make on task one or on task two? So for those who are uh, joining the call a little bit later, then I think uh, what we're looking to do on the stand-up is just an information sharing exercise to hear from the trainees, an information exercise from trainees to trainees, where you share uh, what progress you've made and uh, what you're working on, any challenges or questions that you have. And the reason we do that is the challenges and questions that trainees have in task one, task two, or other tasks are usually the same. So by sharing them, then we can learn, uh, other people will be able to learn as well. So if anyone wants to use, uh, to unmute and speak and give us a 30 second update or ask any questions, this is the right opportunity to do that. Otherwise, I think the program is very clear. Um, the training content is available. The Slack group is uh, available to support questions. We have two tutorials today. We had a community building session this morning. Um, we will be having an additional um, session or an additional task, which will be added to the content uh, that'll be added by today. And that's uh, the outcome that we imagine is that each of you gains enough hands-on expertise to um, be able to use AI to create images to create a website to create content and to create a budget and to put all of that together so lilian asks if a person misses one of the days due to the availability how yeah. can they catch up um 
So Lillian, that's absolutely no problem. We're not expecting that you are attending any of the sessions or all of the sessions. The graduation criteria, as is written in the document, is very clear. You have to submit at least three of the four tasks. So there are four main tasks and you have to submit at least three of those and you have to get at least 50% uh, or above. And that's the criteria to get a certificate. Are there any other questions? Or if there's anyone else who would like to share uh, the progress that they've made so far? Maybe I can ask the same question in a different way. Um, and maybe you can use the chat box. Has anyone started on task one? So if you have started on task one, maybe you can just type in the chat box and say, I have started task one. Has anyone started task one yet? Okay, so we have two people who have started task one so far. So maybe, uh, so Brahan has also started, maybe Ira Bagiza, Daisy, maybe you can give us, uh, if you're willing to unmute and give us just a 30 second update on what you've started with task one, maybe which sorts of, which uh, LLM are you using? Are you using ChatGPT? Are you using Microsoft Copilot? Are you using Google Gemini? Which one are you using? Um, thank you, Aaron. Uh, I, so I started task one, but I'm still on the phase of researching. So now I'm using the notebook LM to help me summarize the, um, the resources that you gave me. So I'm trying to put everything in a bit of a, one document to see like the information I have so I can mm -hmm. start working on the one page. So I'm kind of on the early stages of the first task. Okay. And why did you choose Notebook LM versus uh, ChatGPT or Microsoft Copilot? Um, because I want to first understand the the project management tools and also the smart the smartwatch uh, kind of uh, area, so that I can have a better understanding of what I will write about. Yep. Um, I think maybe it will, help, it will help me in the other tasks as well, trying to like do the presentations or the the um, Instagram posts and all the other tasks. So I would like to first understand um, the product itself. Okay. I mean, just, just from my personal perspective, I find Notebook LLM a little bit harder to use. I find Microsoft Copilot or Google Gemini to be the easiest because you can just um, ask them questions and they the information is to a large extent already preloaded. So I would encourage you to, tr to try one of those, uh, either Gemini or Microsoft Copilot, yeah, I find them a little bit easier to use. So if you were to okay. go to, and I'm actually going to do it right now, uh, just while I have everyone here. So I'm going to share my screen and so you guys can see uh, what I have. Um, so I'm going to share this here. I hope you can see it. I'm going to open up Copilot. Uh, you can ignore my, so what is the size of the global uh, smartwatch market in 2023. Can you guys see what's happening on my screen? So you can see the answer. What is the size of the global smartwatch market in 2023? <clears throat> uh, what market share does Apple Watch have in the global smartwatch market so apple had 30 percent of the market create a pie chart showing the market leaders in the global smartwatch market So Copilot is trying to create that. Okay, so it says I have to sign in to create that, which I haven't signed in. So uh, I'm gonna ask the same question in a different way. Give me a table with the breakdown of the market share in the global smart launch market.
And so what's nice is I could even say, instead of a table, I could say, give me an Excel file, or I could ask for the pie chart if I had to sign in. So this is, this is where I like um, some of the tools like uh, Microsoft Copilot, because you don't have to preload the information already. So anyways, that was a very brief demo, but I think just to show how quickly uh, these LLMs can provide you with information. I see, thank you. Yeah. Does anyone else want to share progress that they've made on uh, task one or task two or any questions that they have? Uh, shall I come in? Yes, please. Uh, my question may be from uh, the beginning. Uh, you asked to report only one page. Yes. Uh, I don't think that the prompts that you have given, five questions already given, and uh, below to that, there are also some other considerations uh, to be included there. How can we summarize such uh, uh, kind of, it's too much, I think so, within one page? Yeah, I think, so I think it is possible what, what we're trying, um, there's the the key information is I think we're just what we're, we're we're hoping that you will be able to do is to provide a very brief overview of what the smartwatch market looks like and what which features do you want to include so there's only a few things that we're asking you to include what is the overall market size for smartwatches which features will be included which geography should the launch focus on which target customer group should be selected and who are the key competitors. So I think with those, only those five questions providing an overview, we feel like it's possible to fit that onto one page. Now, if your report goes longer and there's information that you feel would be useful, then you should feel free to go longer. Um, but we, in our experience, we think shorter is better. Yeah, it's okay, but uh, from the five prompts, maybe I may try out. But uh, below that, there is an introduction part, the body and everything conclusion. If we add some more on that means, it will be longer than one page. That's why I'm hesitating. Thank you. I see, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, I, I think basically it's the same, it's the same plus the introduction and the conclusion. Uh, I do believe that it's it's possible to make it fit, but then I think this is a good chance. Maybe, uh, and I'm sorry if I don't get the name right, at an edge, you can just on Slack, you can uh, write your question. You can even share the document as in whatever state you have it. You can tag me or you can ask one of the tutors and then we can work with you directly on that. Thank you. So is there anyone else? I mean, if there's no questions, then the, the, the purpose of the stand-up is really just information sharing. I'm here, happy to answer any other questions that arise. Um, we already discussed use of Notebook LLM versus Microsoft Copilot. As I said, I personally find Copilot very easy. Google Gemini is also very nice uh, because it's fast. It gives answers very quickly. There are many others that can be used as well. Um, we've given... I, my, what I would do if I were in your place is to get, start working and start playing with the prompts. So the learning really happens in you getting familiar with how the LLMs work and the power of the information that you're able to get. You can ask it to do work for you, like to do research on the, uh, the market breakdown, which features are in demand. Um, you can ask it questions by different market sizes. You could say, what is the smartwatch breakdown in Africa, what was the smartwatch uh, trend over time, so how has the market grown over time. You can ask it to look at projections, what is the expected market size in 2030, what is the average price of watches. So basically, these AI tools, you could, you can, two years ago, you could have done the same thing by Google searching, but this allows you to do it faster because it allows, it integrates search with calculations, with projections, and you can get the output in a format which you like. You can also ask it to do funny things like, uh, and I'm gonna present again, uh, and this is more something for like a tutorial, but uh, let, let's see here. 
So I'm going to ask it the same question. Give me a table uh, with a breakdown of the global smartwatch market. Uh, I'm going to say, give me your answer in Kenya, Rwanda. So I hope you can see that we get the answer in Kenya, Rwanda. So I can say the same thing now and um, I'm going to ask for it in Amharic or give me your answer in Afan or So we just did two or three things at the same time. So what is the, give me a table with the global smart watch market size from 2015 to 2030 in French. So yeah, I'll I'll stop there. But I just wanted to give a quick overview of the, the power and the speed, right? Before it would have taken me time if I was just using Google search, I would have had to go and look at the previous information. I would have had to find a projection. I would have had to put it into a table and I would have had to translate it in, into a different language. It maybe would have taken me 15 minutes. And as you saw, it now took 15 seconds. So this is how uh, this is why we want everyone to know which tools are available for free to anybody. And this is an opportunity to show that when you get to the world of work, if you know how to use these tools, you can be more productive. Now, the whole other discussion that we haven't had is we hope that you use these tools to get more work done and not to use the time that you've saved to watch YouTube and to watch videos of whatever it is that you find funny or entertaining we want you to be more productive and not just more entertained. So are there any questions? Otherwise, I think we'll be wrapping up the stand-up um, because the point is really to have as many people ask questions and to talk as possible. Any questions at all? Otherwise, you can ask the questions on Slack afterwards. What is the name of the tool? Samuel asks, that is Microsoft Copilot. So if you don't know how to access that, please ask in Slack and one of the tutors will answer you. So the three tools, the four tools we're suggesting, there's Microsoft Copilot. It's available for free in the Edge browser. You can use ChatGPT. You can use Google Gemini. You can use uh, Notebook LM from Google. They're all free. They're all available. And they're updated, if not every day, then every week. The, Capabilities I just showed you now, they probably weren't available six months ago. If And if you have the paid service, if you pay about $10 a month, then I can generate a video for you just using a prompt. I could say, generate a video for me of a cat riding a bicycle that's going down the street. Let me actually try and show you a, let me show you, I'm gonna have to go over here. Um, Okay, I'm going to go here and I'm going to just let me present my screen. Um, here we go. I think this works. No, I'm going to go here. I'm going to have to sign in. Okay, let me just sign in and then I will. Um, okay, sorry, I just have to sign in to my account. I wasn't signed in as it turns out. 
Okay, finally logged in. No, can you see this? I'm a little bit confused now. Here we go. Okay, create a picture of a cat working on a computer. Now I'm gonna revise the image, make the computer a MacBook Pro. So that didn't work. That doesn't really look like a MacBook Pro. Uh, put glasses on the cat. Give the cat a New York Yankees hat and So any other suggestions on funny things we should do with this cat? This is a moto taxi in Rwanda driving past the White House in Washington, DC. Ah, okay, so it's not gonna let me do, it says it's a, okay. That one it doesn't wanna do unless we subscribe and uh, pay for that. Uh, so create a picture of a, yeah, of a uh, smartwatch. So here's a picture of a smartwatch. Make the watch face square. Make the band uh, gold metal. Make the watch face show uh, an email app. Make the hand look East African. So there's a lot of really complicated uh, stuff that's happening in the background, but for us as users, it's just working. Make the hand female. <clears throat> so yeah, I, I'm not sure really Give the watch uh, to control thumbs. So that didn't really work. It still has the one control knob, but yeah, so those are some examples of uh, what's possible right now uh, in terms of with Google Gemini. I'm actually just going to do one more forget image generation. What is the smartwatch market size in Africa today? 
So 1.6 billion in 2024, it's going to reach 2.87 billion in 2029. What are the factors contributing to the growth? Um, give me a table with a with the smart watch market sizes from 2015 to 2030 divided by region of the world. So it's thinking, it's working. This, uh, this query is probably costing Google I'd say 15 to 20 cents. And here's our table by year. You can see it's not a very nicely formatted table, but that's that's OK. Uh, US dollar billion. So we have North America, Asia Pacific, Europe, Latin America, Middle East, and Africa, and global. So you can also see the code behind the result, uh, which is nice. So you can get that. and. Yeah, so I'll stop there and see if there's any questions. That was Google Gemini. We saw Copilot. We saw Gemini. There's a lot of there are a lot of tools that are out there, and it, it is our wish that every person who is every anybody who's interested knows how to use these tools well because we think it will help you in your work. You'll be able to get more done. You'll be able to do more. That's it. I think somebody's unmuted and maybe has a question. Gesha, do you have a question? I see you're unmuted. No, I don't have a question. OK. okay. Wonderful. OK, so then let's wrap up the session. Last chance for questions. Uh, there's always uh, the Slack group. You can always ask. We're standing by to help. And uh, I'm wishing you a very productive day. Thanks. Emilian, go ahead. Uh, just a simple announcement. Uh, we have a, a CPS challenge. Just to know each other, please, please uh, also participate in that. Thank you. Have a yeah. good day. So we have a community building session challenge, as Emilian just mentioned, and Princess ChatGPT. ChatGPT is another one. So yeah, that's, a, that's one of the four that we recommend. ChatGPT is also a very powerful tool. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you, guys. Have a great day.